Hey y'all, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I am taking um, an inspiration piece from Pinterest. It was an outfit I had seen from Anthropology, and I just went agog over it. But I am a short girl with a little bit of plump and I cannot pull off those gorgeous flowered pants. So I'm just going to translate it into paper. <laughs> I'm going to take this poppy pattern stamp by Penny Black. It is absolutely stunning. And I love the classic elegant look of this stamp. And I think it'll be perfect for um, the background that I need. So I'm going to ink that up with some Avery L um, Lemongrass ink. This is a gorgeous shade of green that has some yummy yellow undertones to it that make it a really vibrant shade of green. And I'm going to go ahead and take my piece of cardstock and put it face down onto the inked up stamp and then go ahead and use scratch paper over the top of that to burnish from the back side. And this way I'll get a really nice even impression because I'm doing, I'm probably overdoing it, but and you have to suffer through it with me. But when I lift up there, I've got a nice impression and I'll set it aside to dry. And then I'm gonna take this awesome happy dye by My Favorite Things. It's got a nice thick width to the typeface. And I'm just gonna go ahead and you know eyeball out a piece of my shape and tape. And this is a really skinny black and white stripe that I'm gonna to use to mimic what I saw in the inspiration photograph. And if you go to the blog, you'll see the outfit I'm talking about. It's just absolutely yummy. And I'm gonna go ahead and separate the liner um, from the washi tape by using my craft knife there. It's usually the easiest way I can get these two separated. And then we'll go ahead and smooth that out onto a piece of scrap white cardstock. And then I can go ahead and set my die on top of there and run that through the machine. And once I've got that done, I'm gonna take that very same die and I'm gonna die cut through my pattern paper that I've made here with my background stamp. So now that I've got this done, I'm gonna actually slice right through it. And I know you guys are kind of like freaking out. It's like, oh my gosh, you just did that and it's beautiful. And now you're gonna cut it? Yep. <laughs> And we'll discard that top half. And then I'm going to take some white linen cardstock just for some added texture. And I love the heavy weight of this paper. And it's going to be my base card. And so I'm just going to check um, the layout and see how it's going. And I decided in the end I wanted to trim off a little bit more of the green there. So I'm just going to take it back to my guillotine trimmer and just cut away just a smidge more. And I think that'll... Um, give me a bit a little bit more of the balance I was looking for on this particular layout and then now we need to kind of assemble it all by using some foam tape so I'm just going to put some pieces there um, all across the pattern piece and then also across the die cut because I want them both elevated and flush with each other and then I'll get that mounted to my card front and I have to sometimes open it up because I, I, I don't know why, but a closed card sometimes just feels too bulky for me. And I have to open it back to its flat to make sure I get my um, top layer mounted on there straightly. And then I'll go ahead and use my tweezers to grab the die cut. And I've already taken the little liner papers off. And there it's going to fit like a puzzle just right in there. It's kind of a partial inset, but they're both elevated at um, the same height and it's going to add some dimension to this card which is otherwise you know for the most part pretty flat and then to finish off the greeting i needed the word birthday so i borrowed a sentiment from selfie sentiments by lawn fawn i love these tiny little words and i just masked off the word happy because i'm already i've already got that in the die cut and then i can just ink up the word birthday with my versamark ink pad and then i have to remember to remove the tape when i go to stamp this so i don't end up with a big blob there on my black cardstock now i forgot to prep the surface there with an anti-static pouch so when i poured the gold embossing powder over the top i actually had a couple of flecks that were sticking where I didn't want them. So just a word to the wise, when you're doing this, you know, make sure you prep your paper surface because I've got a lot of static electricity I have to contend with right now. And then I'll trim that down till it's kind of, you know, just a strip and then I'll notch the end there, make the little, what they call the fishtail end with my square punch. And you can also do it with your scissors, but sometimes I just grab my square punch and do it that way. And then I put a couple of glue dots on the back and I'm gonna take my gold thread and just wind it up around my fingers and make a little messy nest and just mash it into those glue dots <laughs> for lack of a better term. And then I'll add a few more uh, glue dots and 
go ahead and position that onto my card. I really love these glue dots because when you uh, put the glue dots on there, you don't have to immediately mount your project. You can just wait till you're ready and then peel those little liner papers off. I go through scads of these. I absolutely love them. I think they're one of the best inventions ever in the history of the world. And then I'll go ahead and put that onto my card. And then just for some added bling, I'm going to take um, some of these enamel dots. These are the candy buttons by Basic Gray, but you could also use the Doodlebug sprinkles that come in a gold glitter. And Studio Calico also makes enamel dots with a gold glitter in them. So any of those three will work great for this effect. Now I'm using my craft knife to remove them from the carrier sheet and mount them, but I decided later that I didn't like where I put them, that I just needed a little bit um, more height with the design just to kind of... Um, and make the flow just a little bit better visually so I decided to shift those up to the top there and then I added one more down below and for some reason that just seemed to look better to my eye but there you can see how all the components fit together and hopefully you can see where the inspiration came from thanks for watching